please, can we make soup ganio today? Rachel sat at the kitchen table swinging her legs. <gasps> and let's invite Mrs. Greenberg for dinner. Enough with the soup ganio. Mama threw her hands in the air. I told you already, we'll make them next week when the relatives come. That's when we'll invite Mrs. Greenberg. But tonight won't even feel like the first night of Hanukkah. Rachel took the menorah from the cupboard and pushed the first two candles in. No soup ganio, no company. We'll still light the candles. Mama kissed her on the nose. It'll be Hanukkah, don't worry, but right now Papa and I have lots of errands, so please get your coat on. Rachel set the menorah on the windowsill. It was such a cold, gray day out there, just the kind that begged you to make the house wool warm and good smelling. That gave her an idea. Can I stay next door with Mrs. Greenberg? All afternoon. Please. She's not so used to little monkeys. Papa gave Rachel a playful poke. But it's almost Hanukkah and she's all alone. She could use a little company. Hmm. I didn't think of that. Well, I suppose, if you won't be any trouble. I'm never any trouble. Rachel pulled on her coat and raced out the door, braids flying. Wait! I'll telephone just to make sure. But Rachel was already skipping down the path. Mrs. Greenberg's house was all clean and sparkly like it was just waiting for company, while Rachel's house always looked like it was still in bed with its hair sticking up. And Mrs. Greenberg was always glad to see her. Come in. Don't be a stranger. I told your dear mama, of course you can stay. It's much too empty around here, especially for Hanukkah. That's just what I told her. Can we make sufganiyot? Oh my, I haven't made sufganiyot in years. But sufganiyot make it feel like Hanukkah. Rachel explained. It's some messy job, all that frying. But Mama and Papa would be so surprised. Rachel jumped in the air. Hmm, I didn't think of that. I do have plenty of jelly. Wonderful, Rachel exclaimed. She skipped into the kitchen where everything had its own place and it all sparkled, even the floor. Mrs. Greenberg handed her an apron and they both got right to work kneading the dough. Rachel tried to keep her dough in a nice little hill like Mrs. Greenberg's. But somehow, her little hill slid right off the table. Oops, said Rachel. Oi, said Mrs. Greenberg. What a mushy mess. Rachel grabbed the mop, but the more she mopped, the worse it got. That's okay. I'll finish later. Don't you worry. After all, what's a little jelly between friends? Next, it was time for the egg. Rachel tried to crack it into the bowl just like Mama always did, but somehow it popped right out of her hands. Oops, said Rachel. Oi, said Mrs. Greenberg. What a slippery mess. Rachel grabbed the mop, but the more she mopped, the worse it got. That's fine. I'll finish later. Mrs. Greenberg stepped over the shiny yellow streaks. Don't you worry, Bubbala. After all, what's a little egg between friends? Mm. She gave a sigh. Soon we'll have Hanukkah soup gone out, Rachel reminded her. Mrs. Greenberg stirred everything in a big bowl. Rachel lugged over a big bag of flour. Don't we need this? But somehow the bag ripped. Oops, said Rachel. Oi, said Mrs. Greenberg. What a powdery mess. Rachel grabbed the mop, but the more she mopped, the worse it got. Never mind. I'll get it later, said Mrs. Greenberg. Don't you worry. After all, what's a little flower between friends? But she looked awfully tired. Soon it'll feel like Hanukkah. Rachel reminded her, and she sure hoped it would. At last, it was time to fry the sufganiyot. Mrs. Greenberg checked the clock. Your mama and papa will be here any minute. Quick, Rachel, drizzle a little oil into the pan. Mama uses lots of oil for the miracle of when the oil lasted eight days. But somehow the oil came spurting out faster than Rachel had expected. Much faster. Oops. What a soppy mess. Rachel reached for the mop. Don't even bother. Mrs. Greenberg sank into the chair in the living room. 
Just let me rest a few minutes. Anyway, what's a little oil after all this? She flung her arm at the kitchen. Rachel waited for the part about friends, but not a word. And nothing about don't you worry, either. Uh-oh, the kitchen was such a mess, like it might faint if it looked at itself in the mirror. What would Mama and Papa say? Just then, the back door opened. Anybody Any home? Called Mama. Oh, Mama no. Surprise! We're making soup cutting out! Mama and Papa did look surprised, but not in the way Rachel had hoped. Mama pointed at the floor. What's all this? Mama frowned. Rachel, look what you've done. Rachel's chin trembled. Uh, I wanted to make it feel like Hanukkah, but, but I made a terrible mess. I'm, I'm sorry. Mrs. Greenberg hurried over. Oh, Bubbala, you dear little duck. She rubbed the tear away with her thumb. Actually, it's not a terrible mess. It's a wonderful mess. My house hasn't felt this lived in in years. Really? Rachel brightened up. Well, I can make it lived in any time you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darling, I'm sure you can. Rachel grabbed the mop. Now let's really clean up. Don't be silly. I'll do it later, said Mrs. Greenberg. Do me a favor said Mama. Sit down and relax. That's right. We want to do it. Mama tied on an apron and fried up the sufganiyo crispy and hot while Rachel and Papa cleaned up. Now the house was all sparkly, warm, and good smelling. Mrs. Greenberg lit the candles and said the bracha. Finally, everything was just how Rachel had imagined. Thank you, Mrs. Greenberg, she beamed. Don't thank me. Thank you. Mrs. Greenberg grandly set the sufganiyot on the table. I've got sufganiyot and company. You sure do. Rachel hugged Mrs. Greenberg and gave a happy sigh. Now this feels like Hanukkah.